All right, lots of talk about Brock Purdy, and he's not playing well. He's thrown some interceptions, and the team is losing. And I get it. I understand. Playing the quarterback position, you are going to make some mistakes every single game. Difference oftentimes between people saying great game and bad game is those three or four mistakes you make, do they hit the ground or do they go to the other team? The point being is that we have to break down every play and every game at its whole. We can't just look at, oh, he's thrown a couple interceptions the last couple games, so he's playing terrible football. No, he's not. He's playing really good football, but he's made some mistakes. They've been in some tough situations where he's had to force some balls down the field because they've been behind in games. And that's what happens playing the quarterback position. But I just want people out there to be able to see the big picture and understand what this young man is doing so we can have a, a, an educated um, you know, perspective of how good he's playing overall and the interceptions that happen, why they happen. I broke that down a little bit earlier on Twitter, some of the mistakes that happened and what led to those things. But I want to show you what he's doing in the course of this game, what he did in this game for you to decide, is he playing terrible football or is he playing pretty good with just a few mistakes along the way? Okay, so let's dive into it here. It's all kinds of little things within the game. All right, so what we're trying to do here on this particular play is we're gonna run a shallow here and we're trying to get the ball to Christian McCaffrey right here on what we call a little quick post, T post, tailback post. All right, so we're gonna read that area of the field. We get the chase by this defender, but they've dropped the safety down into what we call a robber position. So he's coming down and trying to steal the middle. So the whole read here um, for Brock Purdy is man-to-man -man coverage. Does this guy chase the shallow or not? Okay, so this particular play, you see it, he doesn't. He goes to clamp Christian McCaffrey. So could Brock get back a little bit faster to this side? Possibly. And read what he's got going over on this side? Yeah, possibly could. Be a little bit faster here, but still. Patience, he's trying to get back there now, but instead realizes, okay, so wasn't perfect. Didn't go through it as fast as you'd like him to, but bottom line at the end of the day is he still made a huge play and a first down for you when he didn't read it correctly. And that's a big part of playing the quarterback position. When everything doesn't go well, do you still create positive plays? Okay, here's another one. Look at this. I don't know. You tell me what the offensive line is supposed to do. They're leaving a defensive end free to run right at Brock Purdy. Okay, so what's he do? Boom, buys some time, gets out, makes a huge play down the field. Everything's not perfect. He's making plays better when things aren't perfect around him or when he doesn't play the play perfect. Okay, so this is a play, it's gonna come back and show itself. Okay, so here's what you see, looks like, they're going to run a blitz right here. Lots of guys up at the line of scrimmage. And we're going to run what we call T-seam. So this guy's going to run what I call an influence post. Or some people might call it an over. We're going to run a go out here. And then we're going to try to get Christian McCaffrey on the tailback seam right here. If we can pull out that area, that's what we're going for. Okay, so Brock comes back. Feels this safety get out of here. Feels this window right here, and so he's trying to make this throw to Brandon Ayuk, okay? This is the one where a lot of people said, well, this one could have been intercepted too, no doubt. Wilson does a great job getting his hand up and knocking it away, but I I'm showing you this for a reason. I'm going to come back and talk about this later. But you see where the window was. It just, he had to throw it a little lower than he wanted to. It got knocked down by the linebacker that popped out. Okay, incomplete pass. Is it a terrible decision? Is it terrible that he tried to take that shot? We'll talk about that later. All right, here's another one. Off the play action, get back. You got a little corner, flat read off of the corner over here that's sitting down. Boom, another chunk play. So you can chunk play after chunk play after chunk play. Positive plays, first downs all across the board. Okay, so I'm showing you this for a reason too. So. You watched my Twitter video on Monday, 
you'll recognize this a little bit. So what are 49ers doing here? So they got two flat routes over here. They're running what we call seven stops right here on both sides. And then they're putting Christian McCaffrey right in the middle of the field. Okay, so what we really want is we want a corner off look on the outside. So we want these guys soft so we could isolate the out, I'm sorry, the corner. We, so we can isolate the outside backer with a high low to these stops and flats. Well, Cincinnati goes with a cover two look. So they got somebody in the flat, somebody in the hook, somebody in the flat, somebody in the hook technically, and they're running Tampa. So this guy's running deep. And so the throw is right there where they void it. But what I want you to notice right here, I'm not sure who this defender is on this one, but this backside defender might be built in here. Uh, but look how he squeezes it. That's what we know in Tampa too, is that the middle of the field is voided because this guy's going deep. So these outside linebackers have to kind of play both areas. They have to play the hook, take away that seven stop, read the quarterback's eyes, and then squeeze this so teams can't just constantly take advantage of that mic running out of there. So we get the completion, boom, big hit right there. Okay, it's gonna come back and show itself once again later in this tape. But that was a good decision by Brock, understanding the weakness of the defense. So here's another one, right? We got a little bit of pressure, he steps up, there's bodies around him, okay? Nothing really shows itself, we got a guy down here. This hasn't come out yet, plus this corner kinda hanging here. Not a lot there, boom, runs through it. Here we go again, another big play, running the football, making a positive play out of things that aren't great, aren't set up great, not a perfect plan, not guys wide open, all right? Okay, so this is similar play to what I talked about on Monday too, what kind of we call wrap. So it's a wrap in, got a guy going vertical, and then uh, somebody going uh, down on, on a hook. Now I threw an interception on one of these later in the game, but I just want you to see this. What's he see? Okay, on the snap, they're trying to run out, meaning the Bengals are trying to run out into a too high look. So too high, we always want to peak the vertical down the middle of the field. And George Kittle does a great job right here. So any tight ends, any teachers of the game, where he's going here, he's got a tight alignment here, but he does a great job of widening back up because we never want to cross the middle of the field when we're running one of these middle routes because we've got a safety sitting back on the backside. So middle open, we want to stay down the middle of those hashes. George does a great job of widening back to keep himself away. See that widening back away from the safety. But look at this throw, up and down throw, linebacker running, doesn't matter. Boom, huge play from your own goal line, set up inside the end zone, bang, big time throw down the middle of the field, read and throw there by Brock Purdy. All right, pressure's coming, pressure's coming. Okay, we're basically running kind of a double post here, but we've got this over and this flat coming. All right, so you always can peek at the double post, but everybody's really deep on this one. So we're really making this an outside linebacker read. So we've got a high, low read over to flat right here. Now the read might tell you, uh, maybe just take the flat right here. This guy's soft enough that we'll just take the flat and we'll live for another day. But again, these are the big time throws. You see pressure all around Brock Purdy right here. Does this look like it's coming open? Not really, there's bodies there, there's bodies deep. Let's this thing go, bang. Yep, should have been caught, drop ball right there, but what should have been another big chunk play right there. Stayuk not able to make the catch right there. Purdy playing bad. It's a pretty darn good throw right there with guys in your face, small window. Okay, how about this one? All right, so this play, we're gonna run a little seam here by Kittle. We're gonna run another seam here with our running back, a go on the outside and right here, okay? So we're trying to get, if it's too high, trying to get a two on one over to this safety. If they roll to the middle, we're trying to get a two on one on that safety right here. So on the snap, you see it, they're going back to one high. Where's the safety? 
He is shading to this side. Look at this throw, up and over, deep defender, right here, up and over, back to the other side. I mean, come on now. Heck of a throw right there. Right, I know we're saying, oh, well, Brock Purdy doesn't have all that talent, whatever, whatever. How many guys in the league can make that throw? Read, timing, throw, up and over that guy with that accuracy, that touch. Here's another one. It's all tight, right? Jammed up all over the place. First read. Kittle coming here on an in against tight man-to-man -man coverage. Boom. Pocket collapsing. Another good throw right on the money. Right on the money. We drop that one too. Another first down. Opportunity. We don't get that. On third down, we've got a punt. All these things that lead into losing. How about this one? Okay, we got a free hitter coming at us right here. I love how it's no panic. No panic, right? There's no real hot throw right here. If that guy's supposed to come free, this would normally be your hot throw. It's the only throw over there to that side. Well, we don't have that because somebody's sitting there. Got to make another play. Boom. Step up. Look at this. Step up. Reset. Come back to the end on the backside for another huge play right here. <laughs> That's some good football right there. Somebody else does that. Patrick Mahomes does that. Uh, Lamar Jackson does that. Josh Allen does that. We're saying, wow, what a great play. Avoiding that pressure, resetting, making a big throw down the field. It's an impressive throw right there. I mean, again, these little things. Look at this. Okay, you're the quarterback. You're the quarterback. They're coming. The body's all over you. That's a sack for most quarterbacks in this league. Step up. Vision, uh, we only get five yards, I know. Not a huge play right here, but it is a huge play because that five yards is the difference between sack here and catch here, right? That's 12, 14 yards of hidden yardage within a game that make the difference. Really well done right there. Avoid the sack, get a positive play. Sometimes those are the best plays in football. You avoid a negative and you create a positive. Okay, so here's the one I was talking about. Look at... Cincinnati again, everybody walked up. What are we gonna try to run? We're gonna try to run the T-seam that we were looking at earlier. What did he try to throw last time? This right here got knocked down by the linebacker dropping out. Okay, well, okay, he got me last time. Not gonna let him get me this time. Wilson moves, now I see the opening a little bit better. Boom, now I'm gonna take that throw. Oh, was that a horrible decision? Almost an interception on the last one. Well, sometimes you gotta make tight throws in this game but he comes off boom and he takes it now for those quarterbacks that are watching i would love for him to be a little bit more patient on this particular play because we're running this when we have this we want to try to isolate this safety right we want him to get across that safety's face and see if we can get this t seam right here i get it though it pops it's there we don't necessarily want to wait all the time but I just wanted you to show, just to show you, as this guy crosses, if this guy holds there, there's a huge play for the TC and what we're trying to get, but I get it. I understand why he went there. It popped, middle of the field's open, the safety's really deep. Let's go take it, get the ball out of our hands and get another positive play. Okay, where are we going with the football right here? Okay, where are we going? Uh, Maybe back to this side, but they're dropping a safety down here. So he's looking over to this side here. This is running a return. No real separation here as bodies are starting to come around him. So another great play. Joe Burrow did something like this in the same game. And we're all like, oh my gosh, Joe Burrow's back. He's awesome. And he is, and he is awesome. But look at this. Avoiding all that, okay? Cardinal sin, don't throw back across your body to the middle of the field late. Don't do it. That's where interceptions happen. Well... He sees George Kittle sitting right here. He's got bodies chasing him. It's late across the middle. Come on, great throw. Great throw, great play, setting him up for a touchdown where he would do the same thing on the touchdown, sprinting out and finding a guy back across the middle. That's a great play right there. And again, other quarterbacks in the league do it. We're raving all about him. Great recognition once again. Okay, so we're... Running kind of a, a similar look right here as that seam. They're dropping back to middle. 
And this safety's dropping down, but he's dropping down high. Recognizing the soft spot in the zone based on their rotation. Boom, take it. Right? It feels like George Kittle is supposed to continue to go across here on this particular play. I'm not really sure. He just never really stops. But Brock recognizes the hole because this guy's deep, and he takes it right now. Puts it on him quick. Recognizes. Feel for the game. Boom. Okay? He's coming back. They've got a post right here that we're trying to get against middle high. This guy's taking it away. That's replace where that guy's taking it away right now. Nice completion. I mean, look at all these chunk plays that they're getting with their quarterback playing awful football, as everybody's saying. Most guys would love to be playing this well on a week-in, week-out basis. Okay, so here's the play that we were talking about before. So the last time they ran this, seven stop, seven stop, flat, flat, guy in the middle. Remember, they threw it to Christian McCaffrey. Uh, they got the completion there. Christian McCaffrey was sitting right between the hatches. I broke this down on Twitter uh, on Monday. And this guy was squeezing to it, but he made the tackle. Okay, so now we're coming back with the same thing. And for whatever reason, Christian takes it a little bit deeper and probably taught that way, I'm sure. Um, deeper situation. A little bit deeper and favors the backside here. Now we got pressure in our face if we're Brock. He's going to the right spot because, remember, it was Tampa 2. The void is in the middle of the field, but because he goes deeper, because he has pressure and he has to rush it, backside player, boom, steals this one, gets an interception, even though it's called back, gets an interception. So in a perfect world, what would we want to do? In a perfect world, we're going to, A, decide where we want to put this middle player. I like to put him a little bit more strong because I want the backside guy to have to cover more ground, but it lets me know where my read is. So if this guy gets uh, depth right now and I stay to the strong side, I feel pretty good about hitting that hook. If we want the hook to come a little bit more to the middle, then I have to decide, do I want to read the backside guy or the front side squeeze, okay? But I have to be ready for it. I have to see kind of both sides. So if we see the backside squeeze and he's got time, you're going to see on this play, if he's got time to set up and feel this squeeze, now we get our high low over here off of that corner, but doesn't have time, got to get rid of this quick. It's a little bit deeper. Christian McCaffrey's fading the back to the backside hash. All these little factors lead to an interception here as they're trying to play catch up. All right, so you take a look at the tape and you tell me how bad Brock Purdy is playing. That, that was like 16 plays right there. Now, it wasn't every one of them. I talked about the interceptions, a couple of the mistakes that happened on Monday. But that's 16 plays in the course of the game where it's big play after big play, making something good out of something bad. That obviously wasn't all the good plays that he had. Were there a couple other bad plays mixed in there? Sure, there was. I mean, you don't play the quarterback position perfectly, but that's playing the quarterback position at a really, really high level, even though they lost the game by 14 points. So I just wanted to show people that there's a bigger picture out there than just how many interceptions he's thrown over the last three games and they're 0-3. So quarterback must be playing bad because they were winning when he wasn't turning the ball over earlier in the year and last year. He's playing some really, really good football. A lot of issues going on with this team that's allowing other teams to finally get the best of them and win some games. But to me, it is not about Brock Purdy making mistake after mistake after mistake. He's still playing really, really good football.